Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody uh, sent me an email, asked me about laying out a jig for business cards. Several ways you could do it, and, and I'm going to show you how to lay it out, and then I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts on the jig itself. So let's say this is your business card that's three and a half by two. If you're going to cut this out of a uh, quarter inch MDF like he said he was, it's going to take some time to cut out the whole sheet of business cards. I would mark them, but we'll get into that later, depending on how many you're going to do. So we're going to go to edit and step and repeat. And under our horizontals, we're going to put space between objects. He, he suggested half of an inch. The less space you have, the better. We're going to do five across because he's trying to get as many in as he can. And I'm going to show you why you want this extra room. And then we'll select them here and go up to the top and put no offset and go here, space between objects. And we're going to put seven. So that's about as many as you're going to get on a sheet. I would change my nudge factor to like a quarter of an inch. And this is how I would do this. I would nudge this over. I would put your MDF. I'm going to just color this in for just a second in a say an N MDF color. So that's what your sheet would look like. But my suggestion, if you're only doing it for these uh, six times seven, 42 cards. No, it's actually eight because we made copies. So it's six times eight because we made seven copies. That's all you're going to get on there. But the reason I moved them over, if you're going to use this template again, and I've done this on a pin jig, I would take your two-point line, and I would hold down your control button so it's perpendicular. I would control D and make a duplicate and ro rotate that line uh, 90 degrees. I made it a little bit wide because I we we've got quite a few business cards on this, but you could put it anywhere, and I would put it like right here. Of course, this line's too long, so we could cursor it over. Matter of fact, we could cursor this over, and then I would duplicate this, Control D, and make a duplicate of it, and then I would rotate it 180 degrees. And I would put it down here somewhere. Doesn't have to be on the bottom. And then this way, and then we're going to do one more thing. And you would just, I my suggestion is don't cut these out. This is a lot of time to cut out. So you've got those two lines there. And then right up here, I would make, Another set of lines, just little short dashes. I'm going to go CE and basically enter those two. And I'm going to put this like right here. And I'm actually going to make it the line shorter so they kind of fit inside of our laser bed. And I'm gonna, before I do anything, I'm gonna put this, and if your MDF is square, and you've got it butted up against your rulers of your bed, and it fits squarely, if you will make this your home spot, put your laser red, if you're fortunate to have a red dot pointer, put your red dot right there in the center of that and, and make that your new home. Then I would go through and I would just, I would make these business cards a little bit bigger than the actual cards. And I would just run this at 100 power, 100 speed and just basically trace these lines and just mark this. 
The reason I did this right here is you're going to be able to use this over and over and over and over and over for years. If you do not have this home and your home is here and your rulers have moved a little bit or your laser head has moved a little bit, I mean, it, and it happens over time. If you don't align your laser, and even if you do align your laser well, regularly, I'd actually move this line a little bit taller so you'd have more room outside of here. But this would be marked. Take it out of your laser. A month from now, you need to do more business cards. Put it right there and make that your home. And then you could actually run a test by selecting these two marks I'm just holding down the shift key. Let me do that again. Whoop. Holding down the shift key to select these two lines and these two lines. And after you've, I wish I had a laser hooked up to this laptop. After you um, have set your home here, go ahead and cut these out with a vector line, 100 power, 100 speed. You're not gonna cut through the MDF. And if it's not exactly on there, then your jig is no longer valid. I've had a lot of trouble through the years putting a jig and using it a year later, and it's not any good. This way, and I've checked with my mentor, he he kind of approved it. He knows a lot more about lasering than I do. If you will set a new home right here and then cut these out, so set the home first, and then cut all these out. And then next time you want to use it, reuse that crosshair for a new home. So that way you don't have to go through and cut all these. You can just check these two lines. And you don't even have to, act, well, it'd be beneficial to cut them. And if they're cut right on top of the original two cut lines, you're good to go. And the reason I said he wanted a half inch between them, this is called dead space. And if you have a lot of text, and let's just type out your business card. And if you have it in here, and then you've got another one, and you've got it over here, this is dead space. Anything between, let's get out our parallel dimension tool from there to there is over, a, over an inch away, an inch point one. The further these apart, the worse it is your laser's having to travel further. You know, just like if you just had one here and one here, the laser's gonna travel that whole distance. So the closer these are together, the better. And what I was saying about just cutting these out and laying them on top, if you cut them out, and you'd have to do some testing on a scrap piece, you can visually see that that business card is sitting in there. You're not gonna cut anything so you're Air assist isn't gonna move it away. Uh, your laser probably won't vibrate enough to move them. Now, if you want to, if you have a lot of these to do, I mean, several hundreds, then you could cut them out. It'd be worth your time to cut out the, the size, but I would do a test cut to make sure it's in there. And then without moving this jig, use just some uh, like blue painter's tape and just pick them up with the tape. Trying not to, and I would actually take, if I was gonna do that, I would take tape and and I'm just gonna make it blue. I would put two pieces of tape on your rulers. A couple of things that would remind you not to move it and it's gonna help, but I'd actually make another one. And it really helps to hold that down. That way, if you just happen to bump it, you're good to go. And you could use that text or use that, uh, jig over and over and over. Anyway, I hope that answered his question and thank you for watching.